Uh, hi, welcome. Thank you again for coming. I'm glad. Everybody have their blue wristbands. Okay, great. Hi. Okay, so we're good? Is Carol, is Carol good? Is she out there? Or? Okay. Um, everybody enjoy the show? Yeah. yeah. I would like to acknowledge the playwright, my lovely wife, yeah. Alan Hansen.
Does anyone know the actress Gabrielle Cateris from that? Uh, yeah, her, her mother. Oh, no, it's <laughs> her mother. <laughs> How do you compress an actual body, though? Wouldn't it leak and Well, you burn, burn it, it's carbon. Oh. Or burn it, it's, it's ash. Then they take a carbonized ash. <laughs> Thank you all. Some wonderful performance, and I really enjoyed it. Hi, and <laughs> Hi Daddy. Daddy and I work out together. And I have to tell you, it's just a funny story. Like, I didn't really even know Ralph that much, and I just was telling him about a play. So on the next day, he goes, Oh, I bought tickets to come see your play. Oh. Absolutely. Oh. And, then, and then I had a seizure. I couldn't make yeah. the play last <laughs> What? Did no, oh. you really? really? I wound up in the hospital for five days with oh. amnesia. Oh. Are you kidding? I swear to God, I couldn't remember anybody. <laughs> for oh my God. Like three days, it was holy crap. Will you remember this performance tonight? <laughs> I'll have to ask my friend Frankie when he picks me up. Anyway, well, here's, I didn't mean to distract you with my story. First of all, it's wonderful to hear you without a British accent, James. <laughs> and I would just like to know what is the Buffy connection with this whole show here? Oh. He went somewhere with Buffy. Yeah, Aaron, Aaron, Aaron. I was asking James, really, how that uh, Oh, well, he, he, um, well, Ellen and I are connected by marriage. Um, <laughs> she and I wrote for Buffy. First, I, I, I was a producer and writer on Buffy. Oh, okay. And, and Ellen and I, the first One of my Buffy favorite script, shows, by the way. Oh, thank you. Well, then you should know that I'm one of the writers. <laughs> I don't look at credits. I'm all over. <laughs> Ellen and I, the first script we did was a script we did together in the second season ah. with Ellen. So, so she has that Buffy connection from the from that episode. Uh, I went on to work with James and to direct and to di the, had the privilege of directing James in a couple of Buffy episodes on uh, niche writing, and we became I think we bonded during that more than anything. Uh, well, well, we were yeah, friendly with the writing. Huh? Yeah, we're both from live performance. So exactly. Oh my God. We were talking the same language. <laughs> we came out of theater, so and a lot of the television directors don't talk to the actors. They just go stand over here, put the camera over here, go ahead and do it. And when James and I would work together, we we talked. We talked about like what could be really good. And I think this could be cool. You know, we we, we talked. And James is going, Oh my God, this is great. This is yeah. so great. I never get this. Right? Yeah, like water in the desert. <laughs> you want to talk about what I ask, what I want? My, my objective? Oh, <laughs> now, now, the additional connection is, and this is purely coincidental, Dagny played uh, a very pivotal role when Buffy went to college. She had a roommate, Kathy. Roommate from hell. I think we used to say, when we were creating her character, we said, where does she say she's from? We said, Hell, Nebraska. <laughs> um, so she, you know, she was a roommate from Hell. Coincidentally, because we we we've seen Dagny, we've been fans of Dagny, uh, and then when Ellen and Richard were casting the show, and Dagny came in and just blew every everybody away, uh, it was clear she had to be in it. And I thought, oh, isn't that delightful? Another Buffy iconic Buffy character or actor who's who's going to be part of this? Because of course. Juliet Landau was originally playing the role of Molly uh, initially and had to bow out uh, when we started previews, uh, which is a shame. You know, she would not a shame in the sense that Cameron's amazing. Cameron's amazing. Uh, yeah. yeah. She stepped in on the first night of previews. We had two previews in an opening, wow. and she just came in and just nailed the part. 
Uh, and uh, it was unfortunate Juliet had, had, had done two readings of the role uh, earlier, and it was kind of, and then the idea of putting she and James together felt appealing, because I knew James would be great in the role of Chris. And I said, hey, let's get Spike and Drew together again. That would be fun. <laughs> but, but, you know, it wasn't meant to be, unfortunately. Oh, no. But uh, but we still have uh, yeah. seven and Robert, has and Robert has, Robert, another coincidence, and I only realized that after he got cast and I looked at his IMDb. But <laughs> I cast him in an episode of Angel that I wrote mm -hmm. yeah. um, wow. called Peace Out. Um, and he played a, a, I guess, a demonic high priest thing guy. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of makeup, a lot of weird voice stuff in there. But, uh, but it's just like, oh, great. You know, and then Carol, we don't know where we got Carol. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> From heaven. Maybe <laughs> uh, Carol. Uh, was that your husband who said that? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
there's some there's some great acting uh, programs within really great colleges. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Yes. My name is Jackie, and uh, I saw that this was a. Uh, done some last summer, read out loud or something. It was a reading, yes. Yeah, reading. And so how did, the, how did that differ from, um, I mean, did you have, did you do any reading from oh, the last production? Mm -hmm. When you're, you're doing a reading, I mean, the trend now seems to be reading after reading after reading. But to all it's on its feet, there's just so much that you don't catch, you know, but like, we had you know, real elevators, and we had a trash chute, and until they're here, and we don't have time to do things, we don't have time to put in a trash chute, or we don't have time to make a costume change. So much has to be rewritten. So, so, what, so what about the jokes and the poetry? Was that there? Uh, that a book? lot of that stayed the same. Okay. A lot of that did, but when you, that, that is the one thing that reads. When you do have an audience, you know what jokes work and jokes don't work. But, but until it really gets on its feet, I don't think you know, really know. Readings are a helpful tool. They're it's a helpful. very helpful, helpful tool to help you in rewriting. There's a time where you have to finally say, OK, enough of the readings. I need to put it up. Yeah. Can you tell us some of the last time was you rewrote something? Did it, was it so like after it was on? Oh, was it days ago? I'm constantly writing. I'm constantly sending them emails. It's like, you don't have to say this. <laughs> but I think it might be better if you you know, and then they can choose, you know, yeah. honestly, because it's very hard for me to sit there and not be like, you know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Hi, guys. Hi. Hi. Great show. I thought you guys worked really well and played off of each other really well. So, yay. Uh, my question is for Ellen. Actually, I was just wondering what inspired you to write this. My friend's parents, huh. who have bills, uh, her mother,
Mm. And one night I sat there and I knew he was running home to take care of his cat. And she said, my cat is care, cat is cancer. And I thought, oh my God, I'm a terrible person. And here I'm trying to make jokes about a cat that has cancer and it's awful. There must be a funny MDC set. <laughs> <laughs> Executive to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, as well. Yes, thanks. Um, yeah, it was great. So good. And um, you're beautiful. And, uh, that's not creepy, I can say that. Really yeah. But you are so beautiful, I And um, I love, uh, I did not know this blob. That was my favorite. Oh, <laughs> that was so good. That was the um, hardest poem for me for some reason. But, um. Yeah. Um, <laughs> but uh, uh, I want to ask, uh, what is, I want to ask you. What's the actor's input? What, you, you do the readings and things change. What's their input with lines and the way the, the I, scenes move? And I, the directors, too. And how does that affect you? Do you ever say, oh, come on, I, I have a vision for this, and you're getting in the way of it? I'm sure you're very. Uh, no, I'm, you know what? Maybe coming from television, when you sit in a room and everybody's throwing out lines left and right. Um, no, bring them on. If you have a funnier joke than what I had, let me hear it. And if I don't think it is, then I'll say, yeah, doesn't do it for me. But, but I'm very open during the rehearsal period to do what anyone can say. Do you suggest a lot of things too? Do you say, oh, this, I got, oh, this might work here? We just say it sometimes. Yeah. 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 Sometimes something happens instinctively and she'll pick up the lead. Okay. You say it without even meaning. Yeah, wait a minute. You said something tonight. And maybe you I just heard it. No, you said something. But with genitals, you said genitals. <laughs> genitals. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. I've never heard you say that. Yes, genitals. And I went. It's what Eli would say. I know. Yeah. You know, I thought the first time was a mistake, but you got a laugh, so you just kept it in. Of course. <laughs> Um, I just wanted to know if each of you, I've been to 10 times and it's different every night, and I just wonder how you keep it fresh every night, How what you do to start fresh every night. I mean, it's got to get old after a while. You guys make it fresh every night. Really what it is, it's just every night, it depends on, you know, the audience that keeps it fresh. The know? thing is, it's not just a series of one-liners, you know. It, it's, a, it's a real play with real conflict and real, and the, and the characters actually have arcs. I mean